hello. So I'm going to kind of anecdotally tell you how I've got from, um, I worked in uh, two different agencies, PR agencies, over the past six years. Um, and then I, basically in the last kind of couple of months, have left uh, that world and now I'm working for myself. I work with my boyfriend. We have a food company and we're catering, uh, uh, mar marketing and PR events at the moment. And then we do um, uh, kind of markets as well. So yeah, I, I was actually just on the main stage talking about this as well and someone was like how do you find working with your you know your your lover partner and you're also a business partner and it's hellish it can be absolutely hellish at times but it's also brilliant um, but anyway so I worked in a, a, a an agency called Think House and my background is communication so I did communications in Rathmines College uh, and I was halfway through the course it was a PLC course because I didn't get enough leaving cert points um, and an interview came up in Think House which is a, a, a creative communications agency and and uh, the owner was like, do you want to come in for an interview? And I told my lecturer, I was only halfway through this PLC course, and the lecturer was like, okay, go on, do, but you won't get it, but it'll be good interview experience anyway for one of the assessments we were going to do. So I was like, grand. So I did it, and um, they ended up inviting me for a round two interview, and I ended up getting it. Um, so I went in, I remember even like on one of the first days Googling how to write a press release, like looking up the template on, on, on Google, because I literally didn't really know. So I literally learned the ropes. But why kind of they hired me was because I was good at social media. Um, I was, you know, updating my own channels all the time, and that's something they wanted me to work on in the agency. So they were like, okay, social media is now your job. You do the, the social media for the bits and bobs we have here. So some of the brands I was working on there were like Barry's Tea, Diet Coke, Ben & Jerry's, um, what else I was working on? Tiger Beer, a lot of the Heineken brands as well. So I, I was kind of put on a lot of food stuff, and that's kind of my background really in agency. Um, so I guess when I went in, I was given all these different brands and then I was told to talk about them then across different social media platforms and put together different conversation calendars, which is basically kind of like your week ahead of different Facebook and Twitter uh, posts that you're going to use for that brand to tell them about it. Um, and one of them was Barry's Tea and I remember my mum being like, sure, what can you talk about tea? Like, there's only so many Tuesdays you can talk about a good cup of tea or what kind of tea, milk do you use in your, in your tea or what biscuit do you like with your tea? Um, so so I was kind of went in and I was kind of thinking, okay, well, how do I talk about this brand and how do I make it fresh and interesting each week? So I actually went down to uh, Barry's Tea, which is in Cork, I'm sure you'll know, um, and I met my client and she was kind of showing me around the factory and she was like, this is where all the tea is made, this is where the factory workers blend all the tea. Um, and then she kind of was like, and up there is Dennis Daly, he's the master tea blender. Have any of you heard of Dennis Daly? No? He's... Uh, you have, yeah. You're you're in food, so you'd be known. Um, but Dennis Daly was literally like a Willy Wonka type character. He's worked in Barry's Tea for like 40, 50 years, I think. And I was brought up to his office. Were you ever up in his office? It's insane. So there was this little woman following him with a little trough, like what a wine taster would spit their wine in after, you know, tasting or whatever. And he had this row of um, cups of tea, and I think he tastes like 10 to 20 cups of tea a day to make sure the, bra the blend for the gold blender with the classic is consistent, because each box of tea has new tea leaves because of the seasons. So there actually is a, you know, a job for tea tasting, you know, if you're, if you're interested. But anyway, I found this kind of fascinating, and I was like, how come he hasn't been really talked about or, you know, pushed out in front of the media or whatever? because him tasting all that tea and talking to me about the different bl blends of tea and his expertise really shows off kind of how amazing Barry's tea is and how kind of... Uh how they're not like, you know, any other tea uh, factory that are just kind of blending whatever. There's a real expertise that goes into it. So I brought him down to Dublin then a couple of weeks later and um, did a media event with him and it was a tea tasting with Dennis Daly. And uh, a lot of uh, food media came and um, really kind of seen firsthand what goes into Ed Barry's tea bag. Um, and I guess that was something that wouldn't have happened if I didn't try and get to know the brand or see the little nuggets in whatever brand there is. And that is something that can be applied to absolutely any brand. There's interesting stuff in every brand. And then with Dennis, we took loads of photos of him tasting the tea and um, telling us about the different tea uh, leaves that go into each different variant of tea. And that gave me loads of social media content for the next couple of months that I could use across uh, Twitter and, and Instagram and Facebook for Barry's Tea. So getting to know the brand is, is 
is, is really important and it doesn't matter what kind of brand it is, there's nuggets in there. Now conversation pillars is something that as well, if any of you um, look after uh, brands, this will really help you come up with the content each week and make it fresh. So for Barry's Tea again, just going back to them, uh, the conversation pillars I kind of identified for the brand was one was heritage, one was modernity, another one was tea and basically within them it's like a spider diagram, you could talk about loads of different things within heritage and that say for example heritage showed off how kind of um, how much Barry's Tea is rooted in Ireland so you know it was invented back in the 1900s and um, it's from Cork um, and they supplied all of the major hotels back in the 1916 rising they kind of there's loads of really interesting stories about them getting the tea to the hotels during you know what was going on um, and for heritage what I say an example of a Facebook post uh, one of the anniversaries was in 1916 there was like this receipt from the Shelburne Hotel of, of the different tea orders they put in it was a real gorgeous handwritten post we scanned it in put it on Facebook it ended up going a bit viral I think the Daily Edge did something on it but that just kind of goes to show you if you have these conversation pillars you can you know, you can find interesting bits about the whatever brand you're working on. Say for modernity, uh, that's really to uh, uh, kind of prick the ears of the younger generations and make uh, a tea brand interesting to young people. So Saoirse Ronan is a mad fan of Barry's tea. She brings them in Ziploc bags wherever she goes. She was talking on Ellen about it. So we do posts about how much she loves that. The Coronas are another one. They love Barry's tea. And that's to make sure we got all the younger audiences. And then say for heritage, that was kind of more of the older generation. Um, and then tea was another conversation pillar and that was talking about all the different variants of tea so green tea is good for you know um, digestion peppermint tea again digestion chamomile for uh, at night decaffeinated for at night so just to make sure we kind of showed off all the different variants so there are the different conversation pillars and you can apply that to absolutely any brand I'm sure you could apply it to butter as well the different cows could be one conversation pillar um, and yeah absolutely any brand at all uh, this is something one of my managers told me to keep in mind if you're ever doing a Facebook post, would you be Scarlet? So if you come up with a conversation uh, or a, a post for one of your platforms, just think, would you be Scarlet to post that on your own Facebook page? So that's kind of using language that might be condescending or a bit talking down to your uh, followers or whatever. Just make sure it's not something you'd be slightly cringed to post on your own Facebook page. And if it isn't, then it's good enough for the brand. But if it is something you wouldn't post on your own Facebook page, you shouldn't post it for a brand and that kind of stuck with me even today. Condescending corporate rampage is something I would recommend you all like on Facebook. It's quite hilarious, but it's quite mean as well. They kind of pull all the most cringiest posts from all the different brands around the world and basically name and shame them, um, which is mean. I feel sorry for the, the me that would be on the other end of that, the social media kind of person who's coming up with the content. Um, but it's good to like and look at and make sure your content doesn't sound like the stuff they post. Uh, this was something they kind of put up and this happens a lot when a celebrity dies. Brands jump on a, a celebrity death, which I, which I just think is so wrong. Cheerios did it. They since apologised, so apologies if any works for Cheerios here. Um, but yeah, Prince died and they put this purple thing up with rest in peace and a little Cheerio above the eye. And that's really just kind of unsound and it's just a brand jumping on a death of a celebrity. So yeah, that's a good, a good site to look at to make sure you never do stuff like like that. Now during my work in agency life I became obsessed with food because I was working on food brands and um, Kerrygold Butter was another one I was working on which I absolutely loved and um, they sponsored the Ballymaloo Lit Fest uh, down in Ballymaloo Cookery School. I went down, I launched that with them and that's uh, that really kind of, you know, I met all the Allens and I just became more and more obsessed with food and at that time I met my boyfriend William um, and he had just completed the Ballymaloo Cookery course so he really knew how to make food. So we were kind of like, okay, how do we turn our obsession into a career and um, I just work constantly on food so it's all I think about if we had breakfast we'd be thinking about what lunch we're having even though we're full from lunch we'd be thinking about dinner so it's just kind of like we need to turn this into a career um, and I was always asking myself when I was in my nine to five job am I ready can I really do this I'm not sure um, but then Snapchat kind of came around at the same time as well all these little things happened at the same time um, and I hopped on Snapchat uh, and it was actually about two or three years after it really became popular I kind of 
kind of always hop on things a bit after it. Um, and one of the main things I did was scare Williams. This is my boyfriend. Uh, Any time, I, uh, any chance I got, I would jump behind a door, scare him, whatever. But that thing actually amassed me loads and loads of followers. Thousands of people start following me. Big kind of bloggers gave me shout outs because they were like, you need to go and watch James' Snapchat because he's scaring William and he's very funny when he's scared. Um, and oh, I wasn't just scaring him. I was also trying to think of ways to kind of talk about us being in food together. So we were at home and I'd be snapping him making dinner. It seems really simple and stupid, but it worked out in the end. I'd be kind of snapping him making lunch or whatever, and people would be kind of writing back saying, oh, can you re-snap how you made that sauce? Or can you re-snap how you made that cake? Or do you have a food blog we can look at? Um, or are you ever going to be at a market? Or where can we taste your food? So that kind of conversation back and forth from Snapchat gave us the confidence to be like, okay, well, maybe we are actually ready. Because we were thinking we were like 25, 26 at the time, and we are kind of like, no, we'll, we'll, we'll do the whole food business stuff and go out on our own when we're more adulty. Can't do it now. I look back now in hindsight saying, no, we can. Um, so it was the confidence that we got from the messages back and forth on Snapchat that we were like, okay, go on, share, we're ready. We can jump into it. Um, and this is something, uh, this next slide is all about working with the right people. So I kind of have this problem when I ever have a, a, something I'm interested in, I never get the right people. Like I had a few, uh, an interiors blog uh, a couple of years ago and I, I kind of did all the photos myself and tried to do the website code myself and it just kind of fell to pits. What does that mean? Five minutes. Okay. Uh, so I was uh, doing, it all, doing all these little projects myself, doing absolutely everything myself. But then with uh, our food brand, we were like, no, we want to take this a bit seriously. So we got in uh, touch with Good as Gold. They're kind of a brand developing agency. Uh, there's only two girls. They're brilliant as well, if any of you are kind of startups or whatever. Um, and I gave them a massive mood board of what I would love our brand to look like. Um, we chose the name Kerbini. Kerbini is actually where William's from in Cork. It's a little tiny part of Cork Harbour. Um, and I love place names for food, like uh, Fumbly is on Fumbly Lane, Clonakilty is from Clonakilty, and I'm from Nookrove now, which is, you know, I couldn't really call the food brand Nookrove. Um, it doesn't have that kind of gorgeous ring Kerbini has to it, but Kerbini is where William grew up, and there's a little pier outside his house, and they used to fish for mackerel, and there's just lovely food stories, so I had a lot of depth to it, and it's kind of where we discussed all our food kind of uh, ideas. So they came back to us with a big suite, I gave them a massive mood board of kind of stuff I would like within the brand, like botanical illustrations of vegetables. I liked marble, not wooden chopping boards, this kind of thing. So I gave them loads of specific kind of things to, to kind of come back with. Then they came back with us with a suite of uh, assets that we could use across branding, uh, ads, um, and then we were ready to go to market. So we went to the Teeling Craft Fair, um, and people are always like, people were asking me inside, what's your product? Like, you have to have a product. And we actually don't, because our dream is a cafe. So anytime we do a market or an event, it's always quite different. Um, but because William went to Ballymaloo, everything's like we use full fat, you know, butter, full fat cream. Uh, we're kind of not going down the health route that, you know, quinoa and, you know, other raw juice diety kind of vibes that are going on at the moment. It's all quite organic, full fat. Um, this is one of our uh, kind of best products. It's a white chocolate pecan banana loaf, uh, rosemary and lemon biscuits, shortbread biscuits, uh, 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 ruby charred korma. So everything is quite uh, indulgent, I guess. Um, and before we went to the market though, and this is something you can apply to anything, we teased it before we were there. So I kind of seeded out all these photos before we actually went to market. We got tote bags made. Um, and this really is kind of um, testament to good content pays off because, because I was seeding it the week before loads of people came down expecting what was going to be on our soul. So I would say get a good camera phone or a friend that can take good photos because good content pays off and this is testament as well. So these were one of our um, products, uh, Glamnilla, which is basically a, a, a vanilla shortbread biscuit with edible gold dust on it. Um, and some uh, uh, food or makeup blogger put this up and said, damn, what highlighter are these cookies using? Highlighter is like a makeup thing to make your cheek pop and that they kind of looked like they were cheek makeup. But anyway, I said to the Daily Edge, oh, our, our glam nillas are kind of going viral um, in, in America but with all these makeup brands. Do you want to do a little gas story on it? 
and they did. Um, and then we ended up getting loads of jobs from that. So the Personal Fashion Awards called us because they seen this go viral, and they were like, can you cater our event and also bring the glam nillas as well, because a lot of the girls in the office want to taste them. So it just shows you, if you have good content, take good pictures, things like this can happen if you use social media well. Keep it consistent, this is another thing. Um, we, anytime we're at a, a market or a thing, I would always try and make every kind of appearance look the exact same. So we love marble, golds, mixed metals, um, linen, um, uh, the marble slabs again, we love putting, so they're rosemary biscuits, we kind of put the rosemary sprigs on it. Uh, we like things to look like an Irish feast. So then eventually when we have a cafe, people won't be like, oh, what's this new thing? They would have seen us along the way so they can kind of see how we grow. This is another kind of how we look, more bits and bobs. Uh, I'll finish up really quickly, but uh, I will say protection is key. And I was hacked two months ago um, and I had just over 35,000 uh, Snapchat followers and I lost them all in one moment because someone uh, hacked me. And the reason is because I had the same password that I had when I had Bebo, like it was James89 or something stupid. And I had it across my Gmail, Twitter, Instagram, everything. And so once they were in one, they were in everything. So Dashlane, you should take it down. It's a really brilliant password manager. It's free. Um, and it just means you can be totally protected because apparently digital hacking is on the rise, so protect yourself. Um, and I guess that's five minutes, is it? Yeah. I was just going to say, do good things. If you get an audience, um, I did this with my nephew, actually. Uh, he has autism. It's during Autism Awareness Month. And I asked him five questions on my Snapchat. And again, this is another example of good social media content can go viral. Um, so I asked Sean five questions. How can I help you deal with your autism or whatever? Um, and he answered back saying things like, don't use sarcasm. and um, Be direct to what you're saying. All this. And loads of teachers weirdly followed me and asked me to download the snaps. And uh, that went viral. It went on her. Um, it was on Huffington Post, um, it was on the Today Show in, in America, and I guess that's just another example of a good piece of social media content going viral and how it can work for really anyone. Um, and that's a race through my presentation. I hope some of that was uh, understandable. Thanks for listening.